My name is Bill Kinney, and this is part six of unit two of Quick Precalculus Review for Calculus. It's part 20 of the overall series. In unit two, we're focusing on these topics in the context of compound interest problems. So far, we focused on inverse functions and power functions. Very soon, we're going to look at logarithmic functions, alternative representations of exponential functions, and talk about the very special number e. E is a special irrational number in math, especially in calculus, analogous to how pi is a special irrational number in math. In recent parts, I've gone very fast, and you probably had to pause the video to take notes and think about things I've said. I think I can go a little slower in this video. We want to answer this question. How does what's called the annual percentage yield, or APY, depend on the nominal annual interest rate and the number of compounding periods per year? The word nominal means in name only. Maybe you didn't know that. So when something is a nominal annual interest rate, what that means is it's the quoted annual interest rate. We saw in the last video that if you compound more than once per year, your actual percent of growth is more than the nominal annual interest rate. The actual percent growth over one year is what's called the annual percentage yield, or APY. We also want to use this program, Mathematica, and a command called Manipulate, which I've shown you before in the context of graphs of families of functions where a, a parameter continuously varies over some interval. In this video, I want to show you that you can actually use an animation parameter that's discreetly varying instead of continuously varying. For example, it might start at 1 and then become 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. I also want to show you that you can use Manipulate to uh, animate things that are not graphs. In fact, that's going to be the first thing we do here. We're going to go down to kind of that, that fun example from the last video where I showed you you can use the Mathematica command capital N to approximate any number of digits that you want for pi and 2 to the pi. Here's 20 digits of pi. If you want to see a thousand digits of pi, just replace this 20 with a thousand. There you go. There's the first thousand digits of pi. I think it includes the first digit in front of the decimal there. I can actually put this inside manipulate. Manipulate again is the command that uh, can animate things, what's going to be the animation parameter? I'm going to make the number of digits the animation parameter. I'll call it little n. Little n, I'll start at 1 and go up to, say, 1,000. But if I leave it like this, it won't quite work, because that will tell Mathematica by default and manipulate to let n be fractional values as well. If I want n to increment up by 1, first 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, etc., I need to put an extra comma 1 in here. Now we're ready to see the digits of pi, the first thousand digits, be animated. There we go. So yes, you can animate things with a discrete animation parameter. You can also make animations of things that are not graphs. We're going to use that as well down here for our new example. Find and compare the, the annual percentage yields, APY, for the following two accounts. I should say that it's the APY that really should be the thing you compare when you're comparing two accounts. Whichever bank has the higher APY is the better bank for you. Both of these banks have a very good interest rate, like an early 80s interest rate. Bank A has a nominal annual interest rate of 8.5% compounded bi-weekly. That's not twice a month, that's every other week, which means N is 26, not 24. Bank B uh, has a nominal annual interest rate of 8.4%. It's a lower a nominal interest rate, but it is compounded many more times per year, compounded daily. You could use n is 365 or even use a fractional value of n, 365.25, it would still work. But they typically use what's called the banker's year, which is 360 days. Um, nice round multiple of 10 there. All right, so to answer this question as far as the APY goes, we have to recall what I just said a few minutes ago. What does the APY represent? The APY is the actual annual uh, percent growth. It's really related to the B from the last video. The B in the last video I called the growth factor. In the last video I believe it was like 1.077. The growth factor, it's the, the thing you multiply your balance by at any given time to find the balance after one year. It's, a, it's an annual growth factor, I should really call it. By subtracting 1 from that you get the APY. So the APY could be thought of as B minus 1. But what was B equal to? I called B the symbol for C to the N, where C was what? C was 1 plus R over N. That was what I called C. 
So B is really this, 1 plus R over N to the N power. I've got to subtract 1 from that now to find the APY. So now to answer the question here, it's pretty easy. Although I'm going to do more than just answer the questions, as you might expect. To find the APY for bank A, I enter uh, this into Mathematica. N is 26. The percentage, nominal percentage, the R is 0 0.085. So the APY here is going to be a little bit bigger than 0 0.085. Not much, but a little bit. The actual amount of growth for the year is going to be a little bit bigger. There we go, 8.86% if you round it. So what about for bank B? It's got a lower interest rate, but compounded many more times per year. 360 instead of 26. You might expect that to have a big effect, but the... N actually doesn't have as big of an effect as you might expect. The interest rate has a bigger effect. This very well could be smaller than 8.86%. It is. It's 8.76%. So, in fact, bank A is better, but you can't know that until you actually calculate the APY. If I change the AP and the nominal annual interest rate to, say, 8.41% instead of 8.5%, it's still bigger than 8.4%, but I would bet that's probably now worse than bank B. Yes, 8.759 instead of 8.762. All right, so it's a little bit worse. But it's better when it's 8.5%. All right, what I want to do for the rest of the video is think about functions and think about animations. I would like to think about the APY as a function of R and N. That was the goal here. How does the APY depend on RNN? Not just to answer this example, but to figure out how it depends on RNN. And the best way to think about that is with graphs, for example. I could, for example, make an animation of plots of this function where I treat the N as fixed for any given plot. So R is going to be the variable. Start at R at 1 and go up at 0 and go up to 1. N is fixed in that plot, but it is going to be an animation parameter, a discrete animation parameter. I'll start at 1 and go up to, um, let's make it smaller, let's say we'll go up to uh, 26 bi-weekly. All right, so N is the animation parameter. Oh, I forgot something. I forgot the comma 1 there. It's a discretely varying animation parameter starting at 1 and going up to 26 in increments of 1. For each value of n, plot will make a plot of this APY formula as a function of r. It would be good, you can see that the axis on the left is changing. It would be good to fix the plot range. Let's make it 0 to 2. That's going to be, by default, the plot range in the y direction. Now that'll stay constant, and we can see the graph changing like this. It would be good to label the axes, axes label, to remember what everything means. That's very important. The horizontal axis is the independent variable, that's R. The vertical axis is the dependent variable, that's the APY. So we're seeing how the APY depends on R. Stop for a moment and think about the fact that when n is bigger than 1, the graph is concave up. And what does that what does that mean? What's the real-life practical import of the fact that that graph is concave up when n is bigger than 1? What does it mean? Well, it means the slope is getting higher and higher for this graph, which means if r is really small to begin with and increases by a certain amount, say 1% or 0 0.01, the change in the APY is also small. Its growth may be a little bit bigger than 0.01%. Or 0 0.01. However, if R starts out bigger, you know, at some really real unrealistic interest rate of say 0.4, that same increase in R, that same delta R of 0 0.01, is going to produce a bigger change in the APY. So, given changes, delta R in the nominal interest rate produce bigger changes in the APY when R itself starts out at a bigger value. I think I'd like to also add in a label style here to make the n bigger. Label style arrow large. That'll make the n bigger in the animation. There we go. Okay. We can also try to graph it as a function of n as r changes. Unfortunately, 
uh, it's not very interesting because it doesn't change very much because the effect of n is not very great and n is also a discrete val value. So instead I'm going to look at the values of the function um, as n changes. I'll pick a certain thing for r. Let's just pick 8%. Something specific. I, don't, I can let r change as well, but let's pick something specific. So I'm going to look at the values of these things. I'm going to approximate them using capital N. If I can get this right here. Um, as little n changes. Go up to 26 again. And I can look at these values. So now n starts out at 1, so the APR, APY is 8% when n is 1, just like the R is. But as n increases, the APY goes up, but by a very small amount. Notice we're not rounding very far there. Uh, if I use an exact value for 0 0.08, a non-decimal value, I should say, like 8 over 100, or 4 over 50, or 2 over 25, I can use the capital N to get any des number of decimal places I want here. There we go, 20 decimal places. We can see it is continually changing. The effect gets slower and slower as N gets bigger and bigger. In fact, if I went up to N equals 1,000 here, larger and larger values of N have smaller effects on the APY. You can see the biggest changes occur here at the beginning as you get bigger for a little N the changes are smaller and smaller. It does continue to increase, but there seems to be some sort of limit on the growth. And I'll end this video right there. I would encourage you to think about this stuff.